Spike Hearts. What are they? How do you play? What are the inner mechanics that make this quirky little card game? That's what you can expect to learn as I, a noob that knows very little about card games, tries to educate you on how to play this card game. The first thing you need to know about Spike Cards is that you can play this game as early as after you beat Chapter 2, through defeating Monster Scarlet and gaining access to the Underground Tavern, courtesy of Levi, you can meet Carmina. She's here to both introduce and teach you the rules of how Spike Cards work. Now, as someone who has never played card games leading up to this moment, the rules made no sense to me and I got my behind handed to me my first time trying it. And when I tried later in the game, I lost again when I thought I was learning and realizing I did not get it at all. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be better educated than I was where I didn't beat the Spike Cards tutorial until Chapter 7 in my blind playthrough. Without further ado, let's explain the rules of the game. In Spike Cards, you select a total of 15 cards to use in your deck. One boss, two mini bosses, and 12 regular enemies. The mini boss cards cannot be duplicates, so for example, you can only have one Mafiva card, but a deck with 12 golden seedlings in it if you really wanted. But don't do that, it's, it's not a good deck. Your primary objective is to reduce your opponent's HP to zero. Select your cards to deal per round, and if your attack power at the end of the turn exceeds that of your opponent, you win the round and your opponent loses 1 HP. The cards you use are then shuffled back into the queue of cards you'll pull from the next round. There is no set order where the cards will appear, it's all luck. At the beginning of the game, you're given 3 cards to start with and gain 2 more cards to add to your deck each new round. The minimum number of cards you can have to deal at any given moment is 3 and the most you can hold is 5. Every turn, you're granted TP which is effectively your currency. You spend as much as you have on cards to play for each round. You start with 2 TP and gain 1 extra max TP for each subsequent turn with the TP maxing out at 10 on round 9. Each turn, your TP is restored to max. As for your cards, you select your 1 boss, 2 mini bosses, and 12 of any selection of enemy cards to battle with. Each card has its own stats, tribe, and effects whether it's vital attack power, restoring your HP, cards to buff other cards you play in your deck, etc. Let's explore them all, shall we? First off, you have your basic attacker cards. These cards are marked by a dart with a big number signaling how much attack power the card has. From Zombie Ants 1 to Burglars 4 to Golden Ceilings 9, there is a decent range of damage that these cards can display. Inversely, there's defense. This kicks off effect cards. This effect gives your hand defense for that turn. Your defense reduces the attack power of your opponent, ultimately a very simple concept. The next one is also pretty simple, heal. Cards with this effect flat out restore your HP. It doesn't matter if you win, lose, or draw the round, you satisfy the effect of this card and you heal the total amount displayed. For example, if you play Monster Scarlet and meet the criteria of having at least 7 attack for that round, his card will heal you for 1 HP. Similar in effect is Lifesteal. A card with this effect will restore your HP if you win the round where you play it. How much HP is restored depends on the combined value of Lifesteal that you deal in that round. If you throw out a Venus Bud and Mother Chomper card around the same time, which have life seals of 1 and 2 respectively and win, you restore 3 HP. This effect will not take effect if you lose or draw with your opponent. Up next is Numb. If played, the first most attacker card played by your opponent is disabled. This effect only targets attacker cards. Pierce exists as an effect to counter defense. The value of Pierce cancels out the defense of your opponent, so if your opponent has a defense of 5 and you play Kabu, his 3 Pierce reduces your foe's defense to 2. Unity is confusing. On its own, it does nothing unless the card's tribe matches the tribe on the card or cards you team it up with. If you play cards that match the tribe, whether it's Fungi, Leafbug, Bot, etc., the attack value on the one card is added to the other. For example, if you play a Leafbug Ninja with an attack of 2 and a Leafbug Archer which has an attack of 1, the Archer gains the Ninja's 2 attack and the Ninja gains the Archer's 1 attack, giving you a total of 6 attack. The Unity effect only takes effect once per enemy. Copies will ignore each other. You can play two Leaf Bug Ninjas and one Leaf Bug Archer as the Archer gains two from one of the Ninjas and both Ninjas gain one from the Archer, turning their otherwise five attack into a whopping nine total. 
but two Leaf Bug Ninjas will only have an attack power of four total. This is because ninjas can only gain the buff from other ninjas once, and they get them from themselves thanks to Unity. If they did not have Unity, they'd otherwise have an attack of zero. Summon cards are simple. When the card is played, whatever enemy is listed next to the effect will appear for that turn and its attributes will add to your draw. Spider, for example, summons both a Jelly Shroom and a Nichas, which have their own attack power and effects respectively that can take effect for that round. Coin cards are, well, a coin flip. There's a 50-50 chance that the effect that the card has a coin next to will activate. This can range from a Honey Nation's Obama Honey Summon, Acorn Link's chance of increasing defense, or Genmuki's numbing ability. And power is an effect that focuses on card tribes. The card with this effect will power up the attack of fellow cards that share its tribe. For example, if you have a Mother Chomper, which has an Empower plus 2 effect, and play her alongside a Chomper, the 2 attack of the Chomper will become 4. This effect triggers for Mother Chomper herself as well, even if no Chompers are played, because she is of the Chomper tribe. Setup is an effect that will activate for the following turn. You use the card one turn, and the turn afterwards, the bonus promised by the effect is applied to you then. So if you use Riz as setup for two extra attack, you'll have that bonus on the next turn. There are a few other effects, but they involve hitting certain criteria for combos of cards being played together. For example, playing both Mafiva and Zasp to activate Zasp's extra attack power and Mafiva's healing, or Monster Scarlet with a hand that has at least 7 attack power to activate his healing 1 HP effect. Inversely, there are effects that take advantage of the tribes of cards that your opponent plays. Cards like Weevils gain a flat plus 2 attack if your opponent has at least one plant in their hand for that turn, or in the case of Bug Tribe cards, Devourer. I won't be explaining every single effect here, but there can be some very powerful cards depending on the effects they have. Really, this video's intent is to help people who are new or don't understand how the game works gain an understanding of how the game at least operates. In the future, I plan on also making a video where I put into practice and show off some viable spy cards decks. So even if you struggle with building a good deck of cards, you can borrow from my templates and work from there. There are no guarantees here, but if you subscribe down below, it increases the chance that YouTube will notify you when the video comes out. And if YouTube doesn't, at least subscribe down below because once I get 500 subscribers, I'll get my community tab. I'll announce on there when the video is ready. Now, just one more thing. It's not only helpful for the Metal Island Spike Arts Tournament, but if you're interested in playing this game with other people, an online client exists for this card game, which I'll be linking in the description of this video alongside the official Bug Fables Discord server. While you're there, do some matchmaking, as I'm pretty sure that when you actually understand the game, unlike me, it can be pretty fun to play. Now, if you're still on the fence about subscribing to this channel, I have tons of tutorials with Bug Fables in mind just waiting for you to watch them. Why don't you click one of the videos on the screen right now? Fast berry farming, how to beat bosses reliably, how to hunt down golden seedlings, trust me, I got you covered. Until next time, thanks for watching.